China and Malaysia bilateral relations have existed for centuries. China's One Belt, One Road initiative, which aims to connect the world like never before, is another chance to enhance ties with Malaysia as well as many other countries. The initiative intrigued many business communities and entrepreneurs who see it as a way to expand their business and investment opportunities. Panelists at the 8th World Chinese Economic Summit discuss the risks that come with the initiative and those who will actually benefit from it. Our China partner, they are very pragmatic. They are very strong businessmen, business acumen. So let's look into mutual benefit. Let's look into all business you want to do. What is your strength? What can you contribute to that business? Although we are all, any city-wise is Chinese, but there is a cultural difference still. Be humble, learn from each other to adjust so that the business will be mutually beneficial. Apart from that, they also touch on the topic whether small-medium enterprise and small-medium industries can survive and compete with China once the initiative takes place. Belt and Road, it means that this is a good opportunity, the good opportunity that we can turn landlock into landing, that we can make opportunity to the next door of least developed country. But how can they enjoy the benefit? I, I think that uh, this is not only one answer. They, they need to do something else. They need to strengthen the small and medium. They need to strengthen the partner, the partner. And the most important, they have to build up the business model that can tap the, the benefit from the one bell and blow. Those people who cannot adopt and adapt to China and try to learn from them, most of them fail. You have to unlearn, and which is difficult. Then you relearn again, and they are successful. Today, Although the One Belt, One Road initiative, regarded as the 21st century Silk Road, promotes a new economic framework to boost potential businesses, the participants need to consider a number of risks as it covers 41% of the world and 60% of the world's population. The two-day summit ended on Thursday.